Well, hello and welcome to your weekly look at Tippin University Dragon Basketball. It's Dragon Basketball Weekly. Hi, everybody. I'm Russ Snyder, voice of the Dragons. To my right, head coach of the women's program, Josh Mason. Coach, how are we doing for our final regular season program? I know you're going to miss this. Yeah, doing wonderful. Great to uh, great to be back here in our, our weekly edition. Well, last week, a couple tough losses, but there's a lot to be positive about in both those games as well. So let's go back and take a look at those games. First, the game. At Finley, you guys lost that game 71-61. Scored double digits all four quarters in that game. And actually had a 24-point third quarter. And I was wondering, is that your biggest point quarter of the season? Then you guys did it again in the following on Saturday. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the offense. You also go 13 for 13 on free throws on the game ever at Finley. Yeah, yeah, our girls were aggressive at Finley. I thought we played pretty well uh, against Finley, especially in the second half. Um, again, we've... Talked about this before, just kind of find a way to put four quarters together, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, given how we played against Finley the first time and the improvement we saw within two weeks is, is great, it's something to be proud of. And Finley's, they shot the ball, I mean, 53% for the game, hard to come by, and then let's talk about a little bit of the positive here. Chris, Kirsten Williams hitting that thousand point club, I think she hit it right on the nose if I remember she correctly. Did. She did. needed 20 coming into the game, she got 20, and she's the newest member of the thousand point club, and I'm sure that she's one of the kids that you're just really proud about the time you've had a chance to spend with her in a Tiffany University basketball uniform. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Blessed to have her, uh, you know, and blessed to have her to come back for her fifth year. And it was awesome to see that uh, she got that 1,000 point, like you said, right on the button. Uh, against Finley is always nice. And then you put her on a program last week because you didn't want to be on a program just running away from it. But you also wanted to feature your kids who've been here for a long, long time. The other girl was on a program with us last week. Savannah Richards, she chipped in for 12 points with you. And then another player who I thought really played well, especially later in the game and kept you guys in, was Grace Craig. Yeah. Some big, big points for you in the second half of that game. Yeah, Grace Craig really sparked us in the second half. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, she's had a great freshman campaign, in my opinion. Um, and I think she's someone that's going to be um, awesome to watch the next three years here at Tiffin. Yeah, she'll be a force to be reckoned with over the next few years. And then Ellie Gable, another girl, chipped in nine points. Ellie's a girl who role has changed a lot over the couple of years that she's been here. But she's always one of the first ones to say hi to me. I've never seen a disappointment on her face. She just happened to be a Tiffin Dragon. I think. Yeah, no, she is extremely happy to be a Tiffin Dragon and do whatever the team needs. We're we're happy to see her, um, you know, make a couple shots that she's been struggling this year. But uh, no, at the end of the day, uh, it's players like Ellie that are part of a program like this uh, to just keep everything going because she's always she's bought into whatever we need to do uh, and whatever that role is for her. Right. Well, that was Thursday night at Finley. Well, we came home on Saturday and welcomed Lake Erie in, and this is a game of the Dragons' first half struggles. We're, we're there. You were down 18 in the second and at halftime, down 27 in the second half. But let's flip that. Your kids' effort in the second half to battle their tails off and get back in that game. Go up to a two-possession game, I believe, or maybe even a one-possession game at one point. But you got to be proud of it. You never want to get down like that, but at least the effort never will. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we cut it to three, uh, 55-52 at one point. Um, but again, you can't start off the way that we did. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, you're proud of the kids um, for how they battled uh, and how they kind of punched back, so to speak, and responded. Um, but... At the end of the day, you know, as much as our, our kids, as awesome as our kids are, you know, they, they're tired of the moral victories as well. I agree. Right? You mm -hmm. know, they want the results. So um, I knew they were disappointed uh, because, again, it's one of those games where they can see that if we just do exactly what we did in the third quarter through the first half, we would have been fine. Right. Um, but that's been the tale of the season. And so yeah. we look forward to see how we end it with Malone here tomorrow. Well, one of the things that, Coach, I'm sure you look at and you're working your way towards the end of a season is how are your young kids, you know, continuing to get better? And Maya Lynn Smith really had a big game for you. Her three-point shooting is what kept you in the game there in the second half. Talk about a little bit about her improvement from, you know, gosh, from looking way back in November to where we are here as we work our way into March. Yeah, you know, she had a, she had a big game against Northwood to kind of start it off. Uh, and we just had some conversation with her afterwards about the importance of, you know, now that – You've proven you can do this. It's you got to be consistent. Mm -hmm. That's what college basketball is. And for her to come out uh, against Lake Erie and do what she did, it was awesome to see. Um, you know, that's what she was brought in here to do was shoot. Um, and so it was nice to see her put the ball in. The Your post players against Lake Erie, Presley Felder had ten points, nine rebounds. Grace came back with another nine. And if you add Rachel Reichert's two points up together. Your post players chipped in 21 points, 15 rebounds for that. Is that about the you know the production you would like to have every single game from your post? Yeah, yeah, you know that's a that's a great output for our post. You know we like 
are supposed to become a little bit more efficient at times, mm-hmm. you know, um, given some of the shots they have. But, you know, at the end of the day, the that position by committee has, they've done a great job. And they're going up against, you know, uh, their fourth year, fifth year kids, and our, you know, our inside players are still a bunch of young kids. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. a big learning curve for them. And it's, it's girls playing against women sometimes. That is it's, true. That's part, you know, it's amazing to see. And we can use Savannah and Kirsten as examples on that, you know, how much kids change from when they first get to campus to where they are now. And then another uh, senior player for you on the program who, you know, didn't, didn't, doesn't score a lot this year, but when you've needed her to do this, that, or the other, she's always stepped up for you. That's Pistol Brinson, too. Yeah, yeah, you know, Pistol did a great job uh, just being a floor general of the team. Um, again, when you're playing a lot of freshmen, you kind of need someone that can handle the ball and kind of just control what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I've noticed you put your scene, you put her and Kirsten a lot of times when teams start pressing, you use them in the backcourt just because that experience and the know how. Yeah, sure. yeah, so, you know, that's. That's something that doesn't necessarily show up on a box score, right. but is huge for us. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, talking to her uh, at, you know, during the senior game and her family, just some of the things the freshman could learn from her mm-hmm. about how to, you know, control that type of game or handle your business as a point guard. It's not just always about scoring. It's about getting people the ball in the spots they need to. So. Um, that being said, like we've loved what Pistols brought to us. You know, she's always the first one. If she's on the floor, if there's free throws or something going on the other on the floor, she's the first one to get her ear over there to you so she can hear correct. exactly what you want going on. Correct, correct. And that's important. Not Absolutely. only that, but she relays it to the team, which is the next step of listening. So, uh, <laughs> right. you know, she does a lot. <laughs> Make sure you relay exactly yes. what I told you. Yeah, was. yeah. <laughs> We got one more game out here at the friendly confines of the Gilmore Student Center. It was Malone coming to town on Thursday, and sometimes when we all get together at a gym, there's things going on that are bigger than the game of basketball. And this Saturday will be the Jacoby Hope game. It was awesome to see her here uh, this past week as well. Jacoby, if you don't know the story, you can find out more information at gotippandragons.com. And Jacoby's mom was a basketball player here. Jacoby's been battling. Just stuff that would blow your mind if you didn't, if you did some research into it. That little girl and her family and their love for the girls who wear the tipping uniform is pretty special. Yeah, yeah. You know, we uh, we had our Jacoby Hope talk on uh, on Monday. Uh, we we read a couple articles about her and we talked more in depth about her journey and just simply discussed, you know, as bummed as we've been about this year and about the results and and you know maybe about playing time occasionally or what we're running systematically um, any complaint you've ever had in your life means absolutely nothing right once you've read about Jacoby Hope so uh, like you said you know this game is it's not about Tiffin uh, it's not about Malone it's about Jacoby mm-hmm. and we're gonna make sure we do everything we can uh, to give that girl the experience of a lifetime you know she's a special young lady if she's the only person who's not a Tiffany University women's basketball player to have a locker yes. in the Tiffany University women's locker room. So that's a pretty special thing. I was uh, lucky to be a part of that when we did the dedication for that. So that's this coming Saturday when the Dragons take on Malone. I believe it's on the 1 o'clock start on Saturday? Thursday. Thursday. It's going to be Thursday. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Come Thursday. <laughs> Thursday night. Well, I'll start that over. So this Thursday night, the Dragons will take on Malone. It'll be the Jacoby Hope game. And I'd uh, love to see a bunch of folks out here. We'll have that stream for you at the Great Midwest Digital Network and on the radio at WTUDTUDragonRadio.com. It's hard to believe that we've got all the way to the point of our final basketball game, at least the last one you get to play here right here at home. Yeah, absolutely. In front of the fans and, again, for Jacoby. And it's, uh, it's a great way to end the year. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully the Dragons have finished off with a nice W. And always, nobody, everybody loves walking off the floor after getting a W, especially when you got a young lady like Jacoby Hope in town. So, Coach, we'll do this one more time. We'll talk about the uh, little season re- recap and then uh, out to hide from me because I know how much you love being on camera and you want to come and do this over and over absolutely. again. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for your time. Let's go do it on Thursday. All right, we'll be right back with Coach Tom Church. We'll talk men's basketball here on the Dragon Basketball Weekly. Well, welcome back to our weekly look at Tipping University Basketball. Hi, everybody. I'm Russ Snyder. This is Dragon Basketball Weekly. And to my right, head coach of the men's program, Mr. Tom Church. Coach, welcome back to the Gilmore Student Center, the final week of the regular season. Hard to believe we're here. It's hard to believe, Russ. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's been a long season, and it's amazing that it's coming to an end right now. Well, well the, dra- the regular season. The regular season's, season's coming to an end. Tom and I just had a big, long conversation about all the different scenarios. We went through all the scenarios. This program will be two hours long <laughs> today because the Dragons, just put it this way, Dragons got to win Thursday, go win on Saturday, let the rest of it play itself out. It won't really matter. If we win Thursday and Saturday, I think with, with what has to happen, I think we give ourselves an extremely good chance right. of getting in. Right. Um, but again, it still comes down to Thursday. Thursday mm-hmm. is an absolute must win. 
Um, we're in survive and advance mode. This is basically our conference tournament. Right. Um, so our guys know it. We're not trying to hide anything from it. They get it. Um, they know what's at stake. Uh, because Malone's in the same boat as we are, right. as far as having to survive in advance, so it's going to be it's going to be a heck of an atmosphere here on Thursday and great college like, game. You know, early a month and a half or so ago, Malone was kind of an afterthought, mm-hmm. you know. But boy, that that might be the hottest team in the league right they've now. They've won four in a row. Uh, they've won. They beat Ohio Dominican. Um, they've beaten. I mean, they won in two their last two games at Walsh. And home against Ashland, and they've had to have them, and they went and done and done what they needed to do. So they're going to come in here with that same mindset. Um, but again, we're just as dangerous because we know that we got to have it as well. Right. Well, if you hear win at Walsh, that raises people's eyebrows. Walsh sure. is a pretty darn good basketball team. Sure. Well, the Dragons at this point sitting in the standings in the tournament and in the point standings in the same spots and in the eighth spot after last week's couple games. Let's take a quick look back. The game at Finley Coach a double. Overtime affair, 79-78, and a game that's you know that's you had a big first half lead, and each team outscored each other by 18 in each half to send that to overtime. And the first overtime, only was able to get some free throws through the bucket. And you look at the two overtimes, one of ten shooting, and uh, six of six though at the free throw line. Yeah, both teams just could not. I think both teams, you know, it's a, it's always an emotional yeah. game. Um, you know, it was an incredible atmosphere. Uh, we had our chances. Um, you know, West got a bucket there right at the end of the regulation to send it to overtime. Um, we just couldn't make that one more play. Mm-hmm. Um, which, but, but like you said, it we were up 18 in the first half, and that lead was gone. Well, um, then six minutes, within almost six had minutes, minutes. Yeah, we just did not come out with that same, you know, defensive mindset. Right. And um, with that being said, I mean, we battled then the last 12 minutes of the game to force that first overtime, right. um, you know, and, and, and neither team was able to score, really. I mean, I think it was like the first overtime. We each scored four points, yeah. eight points total. Yeah. Um, well, so I think we both teams' our defense teams. really yeah. ramped up there in those overtimes. And a lot of times you get to the overtime session, kids get a little tight, you yeah. know, the defense ramps up, so that will lead to some Both scoring. teams were just, you know, I think they were exhausted by the end of the game, and it was an emotional game. Um, and just could not make that one more play that we needed to. And, and that's the unfortunate thing where, you know, you get one of these last few games, especially Thursday, you look at yourself and you're probably in the tournament, mm-hmm. no matter what happens these last couple right. of games. So with that being said, we are where we are. we got to take care of business. Well, Wesley Jordan had 22.7 rebounds for you. Continues his excellent play that's been going all season long. Josh Rivers getting back into form yeah. now with 21 points. And then Morgan Taylor, 16 points. He got a little banged up at the end of the game and wasn't able to play for you, though, on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, his his ankle, he just was, he tried to give it a go on Saturday morning. We tested him. He just couldn't couldn't do it. And yeah. I, if anybody was going to play, and if he could, it was Mo. Just could not do it. Um, you know, so it, that was unfortunate. And then we got, we got down early in the Lake Erie game, and I – I still say that had you know had something to do with you know anytime. I was going to ask you a little bit of a hangover from Thursday anytime night. you play Finley, that next game is always one. But I, I, hangover, but it was also just I think we were exhausted, you know, and it yeah. took us a little bit of time to get our legs. And unfortunately, I think we got down eleven nothing Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, scoreless the first four minutes. Scoreless the first four minutes, and you can't do that, you know. And and came back. Um, and, and took the lead in the second half and just, could again, could not make the plays down the stretch that we needed to in another close game, you know. So we've got to find a way right. to win these games, whether it's overtime or close games, because we know tomorrow is going to be a dogfight for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, the you know, Lake Erie is a team, too, where you look at them and watch them play, you think, what's, why is their record what it is? That's a lot better team than what their record shows well, are. And they've been in the same boat that we have. They've had injuries. There you know, it is. Jacob Plants, they haven't had for a month and a half. And that's um, good shooter as this league. That's as good a player as, yeah. as it is in this league. So they haven't had him. Um, they've had they've had multiple guys out, um, and they're getting healthy at yeah. this time of the season. So you know, and it's one of those just things. in time for them to be on your schedule. There you go. You get them early <laughs> in the year, and, and that's and that's just part of it. You yeah, know yeah, yeah, that's just part of it. You gotta laugh. Or you, yeah, with those kids. injuries and stuff, you gotta learn how to play through yeah. it and stuff. And um, you know, and we will, and and we're we're hopefully we'll be as close to hundred percent as we possibly can on Thursday. Well, uh, Josh Rivers led you in scoring that day with eighteen. Ian Lopez chipped in with fifteen. All five of his made buckets were on threes, and the three-point shooting Dragons really struggled on Saturday from behind the arc. Wesley Jordan chipped in with 12, and K.J. Pruitt led in rebounding with seven. Yeah, and we, we've struggled all year from the perimeter, and it's going to be one of those things. If we can kind of flip the script here, um, get into the tournament, it's probably going to be because we started to shoot the ball just a little right. bit better um, because we know teams. I think we've been either zoned or matchup zoned the last eight or nine games, you know, mm-hmm. and um, teams are going to continue to pack it in and, and double down on Wes, and we know that. And we've been working on it, so 
we're prepared for Thursday. It's just going to be one of those things. Are we going to be able to make enough plays? Because it's going to be it's going to be a, a very very tight game. Yeah, Thursday night Malone in town, and uh, the women's game is the Jacoby Hope game. Yes, on Thursday night too. And I talked to Coach Mason earlier. You know, everything that goes on out here, the game, the excitement, the fever pitch, everything that's going on. None of it really means anything no. when you take a look at a young lady like Jacoby Hope. No, right. It's going to be it was great to see her and her family here on yeah. Saturday. And it's going to be awesome seeing them on yeah. Thursday. What a great game! You know, Tiffin has so many so many games that we do. Uh, we try to recognize, but Jacoby Hope and it was great to see her family and such a big part of our of our program yeah. and our family. Um, you know, so it's going to be great to see her see her at the game and hopefully we can use some of her energy uh, to help us get a win on Thursday as well. Well, this past uh, weekend Saturday was your senior day as well, so. A big senior day yeah. class. That's one of the biggest classes I've ever seen walk yeah. across the floor here at uh, Tiffany University. Let's talk about your seniors as a group. Yeah, um, you know, we've had we've had so many guys, and we have a couple one year guys, and, and Raven mm-hmm. and Brandon that have That's been today's world, man. That, yeah, yeah, and 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 they've been they've been really really great for our program, not only from the basketball standpoint. Um, but you know, in the classroom, and I've, I've mentioned before, Brandon's working on a second second degree, and Raven's mm-hmm. going to graduate a Dragon. Um, and then you move to uh, Ian and Mo, uh, you know, who have been here uh, for the last the last you know three years. Yeah, they didn't start here, but it feels like they've been here. It's, it it you know feels I mean? like they've been here for yeah. for so long, um, you know, and and just love having those guys. Um, these these last few years as part of our program, and then Carius and Josh, you know, those two guys have been kind of the the nucleus to where they have got and get us. I, I call those guys like they've got us over the hump, you know. They're the muscle. They know they are. Team. They're the muscle of this team, and we brought those guys in last year to mix with Mo, to mix with uh, Ian, to mix with with Wes, and they've been and they've been amazing, you know, and they and they, and they really have, and then. You know, you know, with Carius's injury and with Josh's injuries, it's been unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but they really have kind of set the tone for this program in the future. And then you go to Wes. I mean, it's just you know, I, I get I get emotional every time I talk about him because so easily today players can move on and, right. and, and go somewhere else, and especially with him graduating. And I think that they have that right to. And he wanted to kind of come back, and and you know, he has a legacy here that that you know. Is hardly going to be matched. I mean, he's mm-hmm. going to he's probably going to finish fifth in scoring. Um, he's going to finish fifth or sixth in rebounding. He's a future TU Hall of Famer here. Oh, for sure. He's going to graduate with a graduate degree from here. Um, but he's just such a he's a better person mm-hmm. um, even than he is as a player, and that's the best thing that I can say about him. Him and his family, um, they've been rock solid here. And where we were at when Wes was a freshman, you know, right. compared to where we are now. You know, not only have these guys changed the culture, but I like to call it, they've changed the expectations of the true. program. That's true. They're really the expectations. I mean, you know, let's just be honest with you. You know, if we could, I don't want to say put up a good fight our first couple years, but if we could put up a good fight and, and have a close game, it was almost a victory in itself. Right. Where now yeah. the expectations are, we expect to win, especially at home. Mm-hmm. But now we've went on the road and won games over the last couple of years where we've never had that before, yeah. especially since we've we've turned to Division Two. You know, even with our injuries this year, you know, we win a Kentucky Wesleyan at home. Mm-hmm. We beat Trebekah at home, was in first place at the time. We go on the road and win at Cedarville. You know, those are games where we've though these guys have changed the level of expectations of this program. And that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest part. More than the wins and losses, right. they've changed the expectations. There's not many teams that can list those three on their resume as no. those type of wins. Yeah. And then part of it, coach, as well, I mean, your eyes are on the prize. You're trying to win games, get in the tournament. Got to talk about your seniors because we're doing a program here about basketball. But there's got to be a side eye on you, too, that's watching your young players and their development yeah. as you know that they're going to be what the program builds off of the following year. So talk a little bit about some of your guys. First two guys, I mean, like, I think K.J. Pruitt has been unbelievable. I mean, he, he to me, he's a first, he's a, a all-league defensive player. Yeah. We put him on guys, and those guys are shut down. They don't like it. Yeah, they don't like <laughs> his length of athleticism. Um, and we we still have two, him for two more years, mm-hmm. which is nice. Um, the next guy right away is Jacob Plyman. I think that his, you know, transformation last year to this year, last year to this year, and then especially the second half of the season. And I think his mindset, he's been in a really good place for a mindset to where, you know, going into the Finley game, he, I don't think he got it in the second half, but the first half he didn't and did exactly what he says. And I think he knows, you know, we've got these older guys, we're going to lean on them, but when your number's called, we need you to play well, and he has played well. Not only we know he can shoot the ball, 
But defensively, I think he's been outstanding. Yeah, he's, he's done a great job. He floor. communicates, he mm -hmm. talks, and I think that should give him a, a huge amount of confidence going into next year. Right. You know, John Muhammad has given us a good minutes. Through injuries, I thought DJ's played well. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, those guys, um, and, and, and even LJ, you know, he hasn't gotten the, the minutes. I know that he's, he's hoped as a young guy, um, but he's certainly helped us in practice and right. preparing us and stuff. And when you're going against guys that are 22, 23 years old, you know, you're Time's coming. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things where we really do have we have a great group of guys. Um, you know, they've kind of shown that throughout the year, and I think we've we've just faced more adversity. Um, and, and teams every year is different. Right. But this year I cannot remember a year as a head coach where we where I've had a team face this much adversity, right. especially with injuries. So mm -hmm. we're working through it, we're trying to overcome it, and we'll see what we can do this last last week of the regular season. Hard to believe, last week of the regular season. Thursday against Malone here, the women will play 5.30, the men will follow, then the Dragons, as Coach Church said, only one game at Lake Erie on Saturday, so the Dragon men will be the one o'clock start on Saturday, so you can watch the tip and basketball game if you can't make it up to Painesville, and then if Dragons got to do some scoreboard watching, you can watch it on the Great Midwest Digital Network, just like Tom and the team is, so. Four teams fighting for two spots. Um, we could get as high as the seventh seed, or you know we could be we could be at home next week. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot to play for. Uh, besides for our game, the Jacoby Hope game for yep. the women's game, please get out here. It's such an amazing night. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can if we can get this place packed, um, we need you. I know spring break's coming up, but students, if you can get here, we need your help. Um, to try to grind out this win. And, it's and the last get, one. And give ourselves a chance. Yep, last one. Get you on in here to the Gilmore Student Center. This Thursday night, 5.30 women, 7.30 for the men. Radio broadcast at WTV, TU, Dragon Radio com, and a video at Great Midwest Digital Network. Maybe the Dragon men make it into the Great Midwest Athletic Conference Tournament. We'll take the ride along with them, and we'll do the radio broadcast at WTV, TU, Dragon Radio com. So Thursday Malone, Saturday at Lake Erie. A lot of other stuff going on in the conference as well. It's going to be an exciting few days here as we work our way again. It sounds weird to say it. The final <laughs> week Unreal. of the regular season. Unreal. Unreal. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's Coach Tom Church. I'm Russ Snyder. And this has been your look at Tiffany University Basketball, Dragon Basketball Weekly.